A V B N The Rich Video Blog Network Home to Weekly NFL Predictions Personality Profiles Professional Wrestling Video Blogs Sports Video Blogs Entertainment Video Blogs History Video Blogs and tons more. Collection of my work going back to June of 2014 on Facebook, YouTube, and other social media sites. RVBN, the only video blog that matters on the internet. It's 821 Thursday evening on January 5th, 2017, Belica, Massachusetts. Temperatures 26 degrees and tomorrow some snow flurries in the Merrimack Valley parts of Massachusetts especially the Cape and Islands have a winter weather advisory two to four inches of snow good evening Facebook YouTube Twitter and Google Plus this is Rich again back for your third and final video blog of the day some news to report on the RVB and news why do 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 Russia has won the silver medal in the World Junior Hockey Championship. So congratulations to them. Ravishing Rick Rude, who passed away years ago, is finally going to get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame posthumously. And the Cleveland Cavaliers are on the verge of acquiring Kyle Cole Vert from the Atlanta Hawks. And that's about it on the news from the RVBN News. Why do 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 be back in a flash with my third and final video blog subject of the night coming tomorrow on these RVBN video blogs. The first video blog of the day will be NBA announcer Mike Brain. Second video blog of the day will be about where the 2018 NHL Winter Classic should be. And the third and final video blog of the night tomorrow night will be Memories of Harvard Square. So that's what you're going to be looking forward to tomorrow on these video blogs. RVBN. Time's now 8.23 in the evening. I'm back. My third and final video blog subject of the night is about the history of the NWA slash WCW United States Tag Team Championship, which was a title that lasted approximately five and a half years from September 19, um, 90, September 1986 through July of 1992. There were so many versions of United States Tag Team Championships. WWF had a United States Tag Team Ta Championship. A couple of regional NWA territories had a, 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 tag team, a U.S. Tag Team Championship. And Championship Wrestling from Florida had the United States Tag Team Championship. But the most famous version is Mid-Atlantic slash NWA slash WCW with the Tag Team Championships of the United States, U.S. Tag Team Championships, and the U.S. Tag Team Championships would be the automatic number one to contender to the NWA slash WCW World Tag Team Champions. And here's the history of the title. The first champions were Ivan Koloff and Crutcher Khrushchev, who is known to as Demolition Smash, Barry Dasso, Repo Man, Blacktop Bully, a, a lot of other characters. They defeated the Kansas Jayhawks, who, was, who were Dirty Dutch Mantel and Bobby Jaggers at a house show at the Omni in Atlanta in September of 1986. Koloff and Khrushchev held a belt for two and a half months, but they dropped it to Ronnie Garvin, and Barry Windham at a WC at an NWA Pro Wrestling TV taping, which aired on on December thirteenth, nineteen eighty six, and Ronnie Garvin and Barry Windham held the United States Tag Team Championship for, for approximately few, a, 
a few months, they filled it with the Midnight Express, Dennis Condry, and Bobby Eaton, and Garvin, and one of them dropped it to um, Ivan Koloff and Dick Murdoch on an edition of World Championship Wrestling on TBS in March of 1987 with interference by the Midnight Express. Dennis Condry and Bobby Eaton and Jim Cornette. But Koloff and Murdoch were short-lived U.S. Tag Team Championship because Dick Murdoch got suspended by the NWA when he gave a brain buster on the floor to Nikita Koloff. That was just a kayfabe storyline. Dick Murdoch was going on a tour of Japan, so they had to write him out of the storyline, and they put up the U.S. Tag Team titles in a tournament. The final two teams were um, Ronnie Garvin and Barry Windham facing off against the Midnight Express with Sweet Stan Lane and beautiful Bobby Eaton with Jim Cornette. And Cornette and interfered in this match. And uh, Midnight Express won the United States Tag Team Championship in, in an edition of World Championship Wrestling in May of 1987. And they held the United States Tag Team Championship for approximately a year facing off against such great teams as the Mulkies, the Legion of Doom, and the Rock and Roll Express, and the Fantastics. And the Midnight Express were probably the greatest United States Tag Team Champions of all time. They dropped it to the Fantastics, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers, on an edition of WCW Worldwide, which aired April 23rd, 1988. And the Fantastics and Midnight Express continued to feud over the United States Tag Team Championship until July of 1988, when the Midnight Express beat the Fantastics in a... Um, to regain the WC, um, the NWA World um, United States Tag Team Championship at the Great American Bash in 1988. If the, if the Fantastics won, they would last Jim Cornette ten times. The Midnight Express held the United States Tag Team Championship for approximately two months, and when they beat um, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard at a house show in Philadelphia for the NWA World Tag Team Championships. They had to give up the United States Tag Team Championships and they get vacated it. Um, around this time, Jim Crockett Promotions was sold to Ted Turner and Turner Broadcasting Systems and they started to phase the WCW name into the NWA. And they had a tournament for to crown new United States Tag Team Champions. Originally, the finals were going to be the Fantastics and the Sheep Herders. The Sheep Herders were going to win the United States Tag Team Championship, but but in November of 1988, um, Luke Williams and Butch Miller got a call from the WWE. They gave notes to Jim Crockett Promotions. They became the Bushwhackers. Whoa! Yeah! And the, they had a tournament, and the finals w was a class of champions for the Fantastics against Ron Simmons and Eddie Gilbert. The Fantastics won, but they had a short-lived title reign, only 19 get days. They dropped it to Dr. Death Steve Williams and Kevin Sullivan at Starcade 1988. Originally, the Fantastics were going to hold the U.S. Tag Team Championship for a long time, but they vetoed a heel turn at the class of champions. Champions for, and when they did that, they weren't going to hold the titles for very long. <laughs> Dr. Death and Kevin Sullivan were part of the Varsity Club, and they held the um, United States Tag Team Championship for approximately two and a half months when they dropped it to Eddie Gilbert and Rick Steiner at, uh, at like a TV taping, which was aired in March of 1989. Um, Gilbert and Steiner held the United States Tag Team Championship for approximately two months until May of 1989 when the United States Tag Team Championship was vacant and they broke up the team of Eddie Gilbert and Rick Steiner because Scott Steiner came into the NWA at that time and Rick and Scott Steiner became a tag team, so they split up Eddie Gilbert and Rick Steiner. And for the rest of 1989, the U.S. Tag Team Championship lay doormat 
But in 1990, it came back, and the new champions were Brian Pillman and um, Tom Zink. They beat the fabulous Freebirds at a TV taping in Alabama, which was aired on WCW Worldwide. The final match in February 23, 1990, the Z-Man and... Pillman held that title for approximately three months. They dropped it to the Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton, and Sweet Stan Lane, and, and like that Capital Combat 1990 famous for that Robocop um, coming in. And Jim Cornette was locked in a steel cage. And uh, Midnight Express held the United States Tag Team Championship for a third time. But this was a very unpre unimpressive reign. Because they faced off against the Southern Boys and like, makeshift tag teams. Eventually, the Midnight Express dropped the United States Tag Team titles at a house show in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Against Rick and Scott Steiner in August of 1990, I heard something that the Steiner brothers really didn't want at the, the, w, um, the um, NWA um, United States Tag Team Championship, but they were forced to, to, to give it to them because the Midnight Express was fed up with um, the, the politics behind the scenes in WCW. The, the Steiner brothers held a um, United States Tag Team Championship for approximately six months. They faced off against the Nasty Boys, had a good match at Halloween Havoc 1990, a few other tag teams. When they won the WCW Tag Team ta titles from the Fabulous Freebirds in March of 1991, well, actually, that match was taped in February before the Freebirds won the WCW World Tag Team Championship on pay-per-view at Wrestle War 91 against Doom. And uh, Steiners won the WCW World Tag Team titles and the U.S. Champ Tag Team Championship was vacant once again. But at the first Super Bowl one, they had a uh, number one contenders match for the WCW World... No, WCW United States Tag Team Championship. Fabulous Freebirds, Michael P.S. Hayes and Jimmy Jam Garvin facing off against the Young Pistols, which was Tracy Smothers and S Steve Armstrong. They were originally called Southern Boys, but they had to change it to Young Pistols because WCW, when they were being like converted over from NWA, they wanted to eliminate all Southern re references because they weren't Claim they were a national promotion. And the Freebirds won that tag team match at Super Bowl Run, um, beating with interference from Fantasia, which they had to change Bad Street. It was Brad Armstrong under Hood. And the fabulous Freebirds held the United States Tag Team Championship for approximately two and a half months. They dropped it to the Patriots, Firebreaker Chip, and Todd Champion. WCW Saturday Night Taping. And then the U.S. Tag Team Championship was becoming like a second daily title. Kind of a meaningless title. And it dropped, um, the Patriots dropped it to the Young Pistols who turned heel. Tracy Smothers and Steve Armstrong in December of 1991. And then one month later, um, the Young Pistols dropped it to the makeshift tag team of Ron Simmons and Big Josh, at which was aired on a WCW main event in February 1992. But a couple weeks later on television, um, the, the makeshift team of Ron Simmons and Big Josh lost it to Greg DeHammer Valentine and Telly Taylor, which that match aired on WCW Saturday night in February 29th, 1992, and the Hammer and the, and Taylor Taylor, the Taylor made man, were kind of decent United States Tag Team Champions, but that belt was kind of really an afterthought, as it was just being, you know, put out to pasture. The Fabulous Freebirds, Michael P.S. Hayes and Jimmy Jam Garvin beat um, Greg Valentine and the Taylor made man at WrestleWar 92. And 
fabulous Flea Blitz defended its championship, the Tag Team Championship of the United States for a couple of months. And on a WCW Saturday Night Edition of on July of 1992, WCW Vice President at the time, Bill Watts, says he was going to f um, fold uh, the United States Tag Team Championship at the end of July of 1992 because there were too many Tag Team Championships in uh, WCW, the WCW World Tag Team Champions, and the new NWA Tag Team Champions, and also the IWGP, and he wanted to like consolidate each into every title into in WCW to have only one true world champion and one true world tag team champions and when that happened like Dick Slater and the Barbellion says they wanted to be the last United States tag team champions and they, they did on an edition of WCW main event in the end of July of 1992 Dick Slater and the Barbarian beat the fabulous Freebirds, and they were the final United States Tag Team Champions on record, and that title was retired in July of 1992, and my thoughts of the United States Tag Team Championship, it was an okay title, but the NWA and WCW during this time period maybe only had three, four, or five good tag teams, and it was... It, and either the Rock and Roll Express or Tully Blanchard on and Anderson and the LOD and the Midnight Express were like fighting over the World Tag Team Championship and it was like and, and the other teams were like getting some shots at the United States Tag Team Championship I think um, the United States Tag Team Championship really did not serve too much of a purpose it was kind of like a one of those secondary tag team championships, just like a vanity belt in my humble opinion, especially for the Midnight Express. I think they should have had a WWE Intercontinental Tag Team Championship because the WWE had a lot more tag teams during the this time period. But that's another story for another day. That's about it on that. And I'll be back tomorrow, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus. With three more video blogs coming for you, I told you what they were in the beginning of this video blog, so I'm not going to repeat myself again. Keep calm, everybody. I'm Julie Better Guy. While it was blog, let me see your rocks and nice legs. Elizabeth Hatso, so stunning. She's best. Amy Sweezy's awesome, awesome Amy. Then the Church of WPIX Channel Love New York's such a rocking cougar. has got the best legs in New York City. Bar none. Bob gives a baby C11. Has a sweet southern accent. And when Claire WHH Channel 7 Boston Morning Meteorologist locks and has the best legs in Boston. In the words of Deep Patel last week. No boss. Bye now. See you tomorrow.